let's drill down on another aspect of 5G sustainability, and that is the, the priorities and the strategies uh, that we're seeing out there. And so uh, from your perspective, what are you seeing out there that is topping you know, the priority list of uh, the key players out there? Well, I think you mentioned it there. I think the CSPs have got to think broader than just within the confines of their organization. They've got to mm -hmm. think about right. sustainable supply chains more broadly. So those operators and CSPs have got to put more emphasis on ensuring their wide and diverse network of suppliers abide by sustainable supply chain practices. It's not, a, not enough for them just to keep themselves accountable. They've got to keep their entire supply chain accountable. And this includes it the expectation of sharing the value-based commitment to fulfilling sustainability programs as well as abiding by supplier codes of conduct that govern supplier conduct in areas such mm -hmm. as reducing greenhouse gases and some of those emissions, water use, resource, responsibly sourcing materials in some parts of the world, protecting human rights and mutually assured customer care. I think all of those are kind of bold and things we should be holding these organizations to account on. We see the best operators kind of not only doing that to themselves, but also everybody else in their supply chain. Yeah, I believe those are excellent examples, Stephen. And uh, for my part, uh, let's uh, turn back to uh, the scope one through three emissions and what they mean as, as promised. Now, for my part, I see that uh, the operators focusing more on scope one through three greenhouse gas reduction definitely is uh, essential. Now, uh, through the commitment to these reductions, I believe CSPs are able to validate uh, their sustainability strategies, and that includes certainly countering overall climate degradation, again, getting that you know strategic broad perspective into place, but also uh, by making these cuts across scopes one, two, and three. And specifically, scope one is the direct emissions that are generated from the CSP facilities themselves. So they have the most control over that aspect. And that's one that, you know, that's a, a good starting point for them to demonstrate their progress overall. And scope two uh, is the indirect emissions from uh, purchased electricity that requires, uh, that is required to power all the mobile operator facilities. So I invoke the T-Mobile example. That's a, how an operator can proceed. That is definitely making agreements uh, with, uh, for example, virtual power plants, but also investigating, exploring ways to leverage renewable energy across the entire organization. And that naturally will impact uh, the scope three aspect, which is the indirect emissions that are generated both upstream and downstream activities. And that includes the products that the mobile operators sell and the services they use. And that includes, uh, for example, organizational travel. And this one will be the most challenging one to attain, but uh, already it's being addressed. And that's the important thing, because I think one thing that we're seeing uh, with the, the operators we invoked is that they are looking at this as an ecosystem-wide responsibility. So yes, they're going to do their part. But they're also going to encourage and lobby uh, their partners and other players that are integral to supply chains and so forth to also play a role and to up their game, if you will, to fulfilling the sustainability uh, goals. And so as a result, we see that uh, the greenhouse gas protocol uh, organization is going to play a key role in how all this progresses. And... Uh, so, you know, to round out now, Steve, uh, what do you see the operators doing uh, that are, you know, actually excelling and advancing uh, 5G sustainability goals? I think we touched it on already. You already invoked uh, a few examples, but who do you see out there, Stephen, that is standing out in terms of, you know, really kicking it in terms of 5G sustainability uh, fulfillment? <laughs> Well, obviously, given the accent, I'm proud to see Vodafone leading from the front here. I think their approach to ESG as an integral part of the company's overall sustainability strategy falls into three pillars. You've got planet, inclusion for all, and digital society. Now, those sound like sort of twee comments, but I think Vodafone's living its promise. For example, since 2020, Vodafone estimates savings at for customers, and let me check my numbers here, 22.7 million tonnes of carbon emissions with its IoT service offering, which wow. is in the logistics and fleet management and mm -hmm. smart metering space. I, I think those are just impressive numbers. You know, look, walk in the walk. I, I think 
you'll have seen me talking about Edge from my practice and some of the stuff that's going on in that space. I expect that Vodafone's IoT and Edge services augmented with 5G build and then the increasing deployment of AI and ML will enable organizations to, to just monitor those operational processes, identify waste, focus on how, the cause of that waste, and then just improve the overall cost landscape. And that's something you can't ignore here. Whilst these claims are, are sort of good from an ESG point of view and are loftier than just cost, you've got still got to justify these examples and get them through in a tough macro climate. So whilst it's good that they're playing into wider and loftier ESG goals, they've also got to make sense from a cost point of view. And I, I think some of those cost savings we're going to see there being driven by Vodafone makes sense. I also like um, what you were saying about Orange. It's sustainability strategies aligned with where the United Nations going. There's a focus on sustainable and inclusive economic development, and you've got to have that balance. Um, in combination with the mobile infrastructure that they're focusing on with AI-enabled 5G and 4G network advancement, I see some good things ahead from Orange, stressing their technical and application innovation. They're benefiting from international trade and more of efficient use of resources. I mean, they've identified six of the, those um, UN sustainability goals, numbers 9, 10, 12, 13, 16, and 17. You know, we'll maybe put a link to those in the show notes if anybody wants to dig in and go the details. But I think they fully align with what the organization is doing more holistically. Um, for, for Orange specifically, that SDG 13, specifically the one around climate action, mm -hmm. is really affirming its environmental com commitment, focusing on energy and transport efficiency programs. I think we're going to see autonomous vehicles starting to become more prevalent. You know, the ability to augment those and provide 5G is going to be huge. Um, and, and the other piece for me was the switching of renewable energy as well as integrating recycle-driven, you know, what's been commonly called as this circular economy into right. operations. And then also from eco-design, mobile recycling, mm -hmm. that waste recovery. I think they're just all positives. So I think good to see a couple of European operators Maybe not as big a fan of the French as I am of the British, um, for obvious reasons that our listeners will pick up from this accent. But all joking aside, good to see a couple of European operators leading from the front. And I, I wonder whether that's because of stricter regulations in the in the EU and and in Europe in general. I wonder whether that's a factor here. But maybe maybe you know more about this space than I do, Ron. Well, you know, Steve and I, those are excellent examples. I agree with them wholeheartedly. And I think bring out an excellent point. Uh, I believe within the EU, yes, they are kind of pace setting it, if you will. You know, what are the sustainability programs, the sustainability initiatives that will work best? And that was certainly a major takeaway from Mobile World Congress Barcelona. It was quite evident that the uh, European community, including naturally uh, the European operators, are arguably further along, but yeah, I think there are other operators in parts of the world that are definitely on pace as well, and also you know gleaning some valuable takeaways with the, what's going on in the EU community. And to reinforce the EU theme, I would like to bring in a, a new operator that we haven't talked about in the episode yet, and that is Telefonica. Mm -hmm. And and the reason why I'm doing that is because Telefonica, you know like Vodafone and like Orange, operates in multiple countries. Uh, specifically, they operate in 12 of them, and they offer their services and digital solutions in more than 170 countries when you add their strategic uh, partner agreements. So clearly, this is going to have an impact globally on what Telefonica does. And thankfully, they are. Uh, as we can see, Telefonica sustainability and ESG objectives will have you know, multi-regional impact, not just within the EU, but they also are definitely on the bandwagon in prioritizing using renewables, uh, reducing uh, CO2 emissions, and that's across every level of economic activity. That is you know, the scope three emissions that we touched on. 
And what I think is interesting is that they're really focusing on the most polluting industries. So they're not, you know, kind of taking the uh, the low hanging fruit to uh, tackle their uh, uh, mission. They're actually going to uh, start with, you know, the hardest industries uh, to make a difference in. I think we understand what they are. They, they tend to be what we call heavy industries, uh, you know, mining, uh, you know, some of the uh, energy extraction energies. And so uh, it all matters. And having uh, a difference there is going to help the entire ecosystem. And certainly uh, there is a role for Telefonica and the other operators to play here in terms of, for example, making uh, 4G, 5G accessible to remote locations to help with uh, exa- uh, for ex- uh, that part of uh, the energy goals. Plus, uh, uh, Ron, the interesting thing for me on Telefonica is whilst they're obviously based out of Spain, they've got a huge presence in Latin America. So some of those heavy industries, you know, maybe Europe's leading ahead on mm-hmm. some of the ESGPs. But the interesting thing for me is maybe we need to see that in Latin America as well. And I think te- Telefonica's leadership here is going to translate over to the Latin American region, which is good to see. All right, definitely. In fact, uh, Latin America is a huge source for uh, critical uh, battery elements, for example, uh, lithium and so forth. And so, yes, uh, this is all coming together. And uh, one thing that is going to be a, an increasingly important role is battery life. And it's not just mm-hmm. on smartphones and smart devices, but EVs and you know even power stations. And I think that would just be tremendous that we arrive at the point where uh, batteries can definitely offload you know, existing uh, facilities that require a lot of energy to, you know, distribute throughout the, uh, the community. And uh, so, yes, this is all coming together. This is all, you know, interrelated. And that, that's an a- excellent example about, you know, how Latin America will play a key role in, in all mm-hmm. of this. And also, I see uh, Telefonica is also emphasizing raising social awareness. We just touched on that. And that includes, uh, you know, basically, a- again, using a circular economy, uh, raising community awareness of resource efficiency. And so Telefonica is doing uh, three things in that area that are important that I see. One is you know, managing risks. And that is, again, you know, through proactive environmental ad- advocacy. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, emphasizing decarbonization and the circularity of its uh, use of renewable energy. So we can't say that enough times. That's, again, another key operator getting on to uh, this momentum or advancing it. And uh, again, that's going to be important in terms of reducing CO2 emissions. And then I think that the third one is something uh, that uh, I'll bring in now. It's the digitalization of services. And that includes you know, more 5G IoT uh, access. That includes uh, leveraging cloud resources, but also our friend AI and, and enabling AI to drive more of this automation, uh, driving smarter analytics uh, throughout the entire uh, network and operations and so forth. And to round out, uh, I'll uh, again uh, mention that T-Mobile is also, I think, making a push that is being validated by third parties. And that, I think, is also going to be important. For example, they've led Green America's wireless scorecard three years consecutively. And they've also received a top rate in the CDP climate change uh, questionnaire. So I think all the operators are need, going to need that third party validation. It's not just them, you know, blowing their own smoke or blowing their own horn, so to speak. But uh, as, uh, as such, I think uh, T-Mobile is setting an example, certainly for North America, but you know, for uh, operators in general. And I think, uh, again, it's important to note that uh, they're looking to uh, reduce uh, their combined scope one and scope two uh, greenhouse emissions 95%. Uh, I touched on that earlier, but also their scope three emissions, 15%. And that, I think, is a very uh, key challenge. And at least they're setting it out there. And they're looking to do this by 2025. So that's just around the corner. And they're doing this from a 2016 uh, base. Uh, so, you know, we're definitely going to be on top of that because that one is on the horizon. And we, we're going to certainly uh, encourage, you know, uh, T-Mobile to obviously attain the goal, but also, you know, the partners out there and the ecosystem out there. 